Swinburne University of Technology. The Swinburne Institute for Social Research is one of the largest humanities and social science research centres in Australia. What characterises a lot of our work at the Institute is an attention to practical policy problems and a focus on developing solutions which can be used by governments and also by non-government organisations and, and civil society. So we're a very much an applied centre. The Australian government's invested an enormous amount of money in a new national broadband network. That is going to be very important for the whole country. What we are concerned with are people who May, may be more excluded from that network than others. And so when we look at uh, Indigenous Australians in remote parts of Australia, we find they have very little access to information infrastructure, which is critical for education, social and economic development. So we are working with Indigenous communities and organisations in Central Australia, for example, to figure out how they can use these technologies for their advantage. Now, one of the key areas where we focus is on the question of sustainable cities because we know that is a major problem with climate change on the one hand and very dynamic urban environments in Australia on the other. So we have a city like Melbourne changing very quickly, rapid population growth and a rapid redistribution of population within the city. So all of that raises a lot of questions for how can we plan this city better and in order to do that we try to use some new research methods, drawing on new technologies in mapping and sensing data and we also want to come up with some new ideas that would enable governments to make better decisions about how to plan cities like Melbourne. Well I work in the what we call the Sustainable Cities flagship which means that we're a group of about half a dozen academics and researchers who are really looking at issues of housing and the future of housing in Australia and how we can all have a decent home and within that we've got people looking at public housing, at community and social housing and my own area of interest with others which is particularly about homelessness and for me that's about family homelessness and how we keep families housed. I do work that is mostly funded by AHURI, which is the Australian Housing and Urban Research Institute. And that is work that is uh, directed and led, really, by, by policymakers throughout Australia. So they tell AHURI what kind of research they want done, what needs looking at. And they've decided that this area of homelessness prevention for women and children is, an, is a really hot policy area for Australia. So I've been working on a project and looking at the issues of how we can help women and children to remain in the family home but escape the violence by removing the perpetrator. I'm involved in a range of projects, all of which are concerned with young people that are at risk in some way or another. They may be at risk of leaving school or they may have mental health issues or they may be at risk of homelessness. I engage in a, a range of research projects that have great support from a number of external agencies. For example, one of our groundbreaking studies is the costs of youth homelessness in Australia. This study is the first time ever calculating the economic and social costs of youth homelessness. This is an ARC linkage project. It's funded by the federal government as well as Anglicare, Salvation Army and Mission Australia. So um, I work in the area of media and culture, specifically interested in media industries, how they operate, how they're changing and my particular focus within that is film and screen industries and screen distribution. So at the moment I'm working a lot on copyright and piracy issues. Well, I think there's a need to understand how things are changing and the kind of very complex and diverse systems and channels that are out there for, for getting media to people and uh, industries are lagging behind what's happening at the consumer level because things are changing so fast with digital media that uh, it's a kind of race to catch up um, both for, for analysts and researchers but, but also for industry as well too. So we're trying to kind of bridge that gap a little bit. I'm a professor of anthropology and refugee studies at the Swinburne Institute for Social Research. And for me, it's a really great setting to be doing research in because it's multidisciplinary. And I can draw on a lot of the knowledges and the skills, both from my own background, but also from the broader team of people and students who work here. So one of the projects I'm working on uh, is a really interesting one on media, uh, refugee youth and media. And we're working with a number of people in uh, information communication technology and working with two groups of young people, Korean young people and Hazara young people, where they're making short IPTV and microdocs. 
and then sharing those with their peers still overseas, for example, in Kabul, back in Burma and Thailand. And the whole idea of that project is based on the assumption that if we can connect young people using really innovative technologies to the people they left behind and the people who are still settled all over the world, that they're going to settle better here in Australia. So immigration is central to who we are, how we've been made as a society and where we're going. And the Immigration Museum in Melbourne is a nice example of that with the Sandridge Bridge, which is an old railway bridge that connects the Immigration Museum. It has a series of sculptures called The Travelers, and it was the place where most of Melbourne's migrants got off the boat throughout our history. I think the Sandridge Bridge is really important because it, it, it ties together the kind of work that I'm doing here now at the Institute which is really about how do we understand how we go forward with a socially cohesive and very diverse society, many, many of whom will be refugees. The Institute has been extraordinarily successful in, in attracting competitive research funding from Australia and internationally. We are one of the largest recipients of ARC funding for social science and humanities centres anywhere in Australia. We're a member of five national research centres, including ARC centres of excellence, cooperative research centres and high level research networks. We're also very widely connected with international research networks. This has been a Swinburne production. 